And so when I say Chinese, I want you to scream out the, na the nation that's associated with this. For example, if I say Chinese, you're going to say what? China. All right, let's say it with authority. When I say Chinese, you say what? China. All right, that's just a, a test right there. So here we go. Chinese. China. Russian. Russian. Italian. Italy. German. German. Swedish. Swedish. Korean. Korean. Egyptian. Egypt. Nigerian. I hope you were able to successfully identify the issue. If you're having a discussion on whatever the case may be on slavery, then you can talk about everything dealing with slavery, the good, the bad, the ugly. The there's, whole. there's no good to slavery, though. Well, then w whatever, whatever the case may be. So that exchange has gone viral after a Republican state lawmaker in Louisiana argued that public schools and colleges should teach the, and you heard him say it, the good part of slavery. The good part. The state rep was pushing an education bill he proposed that would bar divisive concepts such as racism and sexism from classrooms. I want to bring in Louisiana State Representative Stephanie Hilferty. Representative, you were the one who spoke out loud. Yours was the voice, I believe, on that tape saying, wait a second, there's no good side to slavery. Now, I understand that Representative Ray Garofalo, uh, who was the other guy, he, he walked back his statement. But still, what was going through your head when he was arguing there, we have to talk about the good from slavery? I want to say peace and blessings to all of you family. Uh, if you can hear me, uh, type one in the comment section or in the chat rather. If you cannot hear me or if I need to adjust my volume, type two. We're going to get started here in a second. And uh, we're going to deal with the topic of tonight, good slavery. Let me say that again. The topic of tonight, good slavery. Now, before I get into the discussion here, I know some of you guys are probably not familiar with the clip. Uh, that's Jason Lyric. 
And the reason why I am playing that is because many of you guys know, or some of you guys may not uh, be aware that I was in Facebook, or not Facebook, but YouTube penitentiary for four months. You know, some, you know, they were in there for a week, right? But I was in there for four months. So uh, they just let me out of the pen, right? So that's what that imagery is, that illustration of being let out of YouTube uh, prison, right? So just want to, you know, bring some of you guys up to speed that are not, that's not familiar with that movie, but that's one of them. One of my uh, old school classics, uh, like I said, great movie for me. Uh, but again, I know you guys are shocked at what you saw and what you heard. Some of you hearing what you heard about good slavery. Right. So before we get started here, before we go on, um, get into it, I want to go ahead and give some shout outs here. You guys know how we do it. It's been a long time, so I have to get back into the flow of uh, knowing how to navigate through uh, this, this, this tool. StreamYard is a great tool, but I still have to uh, get myself back up to speed. You know, I have to realize that, you know, I'm out of, out of um, the pen per se, I'm out of the penitentiary per se. And now I have to get used to uh, utilizing certain things. Right. So, uh, so bear with me here. So let's go ahead and give some shout outs here. I want to start off by giving some shout outs to Yokoba. I want to say peace and blessings to you. I want to say peace and blessings to Darnell Blackshear. Uh, salama to you. Uh, also want to say shalom to Essie Thompson. I want to say peace and blessings to you. As well to Nora Blackman. I want to say peace and blessings, shalom to you. Uh, Nadia Yaz Light. I want to say salama to you. Uh, who else do we have here? Tyrone Smith. I want to say peace and blessings. I want to say shalom uh, to you as well, my brother. I want to say shalom to my um, my big sister here, Sister Carol. Uh, appreciate this uh, the the support, the prayers, and all. So peace and blessings to you, my sister. Also, want to say peace and blessings to Miss B. Uh, who else do we have here? The trice is right. Okay, uh, shalom to you and my buddy right here, Jay Highstyle. I want to say peace and blessings to you. Uh, appreciate all that you do. Appreciate your prayers and support. Appreciate you. Uh, who else do we have here? Uh, Angie Love, yeah. Peace and blessings to you as well. Uh, who else do we have here? Uh, my cousin, Ruho um, Mama. I'm excuse me, I'm saying I'm messing her name up now. Don't don't put put me up here, cause <laughs> Ruho uh, a little tongue tied today. But I want to uh, say peace and blessings to you because my day was great. And I hope and pray that you had a blessed day as well. Uh, you know, I'm sure you did because, you know, your sense of humor, you can't help but to have a great day. So I appreciate you because uh, uh, appreciate you, family. Uh, who else do we have here? Shelly Murphy. I want to say Shalom to you. Uh, Janae, peace and blessings to you. Anthony uh, Galantine. Uh, who else do we have here? Uh, one of the geeks in the building here, Ashley Just Souls. This is one of the geeks here, guys, that is in the building. Appreciate your support. Uh, Sister Lynn, shalom to you as well. Uh, Keith Williams, let's give it up to Elder here. Really appreciate your support. Let's make sure we honor our elders here, show the others that we honor elders here, uh, regardless uh, of disagreements or whatever. We honor our, our elders here. So let's let's make sure we honor our elders. And this is a, a brother I really appreciate. He really is a very supportive of our community. So I thank you, um, um, Elder uh, Keith Williams. I uh, also want to say peace and blessings to Son of Yah, Enosh Ben Israel, uh, Keith McNeely. Who else do we have here? Uh Sidaria so Halliburton, want to say peace and blessings to you. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. Uh, let's see. Uh, I think I already mentioned um, Anthony, but I want to say peace and blessings to you as well, Elder. Um, also want to say peace and blessings to my brother here, Elder Brandon Brunson. Appreciate you. Got to reach out to me offline. I did not know 
that you made a transition. So you know what I'm talking about, uh, but we'll talk about it. Reach out to me if you can tomorrow. Want to talk to you and um, get caught up. Love you, my brother. Also, uh, Renee BL, want to say shalom to you. Uh, who else do we have here? Uh, peace and blessings. Shalom to Dream Sky Lover. Appreciate you. Uh, Robert Haynes, want to say peace and blessings to you. And I think we got everyone. I know others are popping in. I know I'm not going to be able to get everyone, but I'm going to try to do as much as I can. Uh, Norisha Brown, Sharice Reed, uh, Hal Goodwin. Uh, let's see here. Peace and blessings to you guys. DK. Uh, Good run, Yashara Al. Peace and blessings to you, brother. Haven't seen you in a while. No, I've been on lockdown, so I really haven't seen much of anyone, right? So Deborah Ham, Hal Goodwin, uh, Hyssop Branch. Uh, want to say peace and blessings to you, Hune Rock. Uh, Hyssop Branch, Hune Rock. Want to say peace and blessings to you as well. Stacy Pullman, Curtis Roan, uh, Roan, excuse me if I pronounced your last name incorrectly. Uh, Micaiah L, Micaiah, excuse me, Micaiah L B. That's how you pronounce it. Uh, who else do we have here? And I think we got everyone. Shelly Murphy, uh, Christopher um, Neal, Jacqueline Pug. All right, guys, I got as much as I can. And so let's go ahead and um, get into it. Let's really deal with this. I'm going to play the video clip again. So that way you guys can really be brought up to speed on what inspired me to come up with this topic for tonight. Good slavery. When did this occur? I'm still trying to figure out, you know, I did a Facebook live earlier and I, I'm still trying to figure out when was slavery good. So let me play this clip again. And guys, uh, feel free to, uh, you know, put your comments in and uh, my moderators, anyone that's trying to be disruptive or come in dis um, disrespecting uh, the platform, you have a free reign to remove them because we are not going to tolerate any trolls who are who, who who have purpose in their souls, their spirits to come into what we're doing here, come over here and be disrespectful. We're not going to tolerate that. Let's be respectful with how we interact with it, um, one another. No name calling. None of those things, because we are supposed to be the light to all the nations, of Israel. So let's be a reflection of that light that the Most High has called us to be. All right, so let's play this again. If you're having a discussion on whatever the case may be on slavery, then you can talk about everything dealing with slavery, the good, the bad, the ugly. The there's, whole... there's no good to slavery, though. Well, then whatever, whatever the case may be. So that exchange has gone viral after a Republican state lawmaker in Louisiana argued that public schools and colleges should teach the, and you heard him say it, the good part of slavery. The good part. The state rep was pushing an education bill he proposed that would bar divisive concepts such as racism and sexism from classrooms. I want to bring in Louisiana State Representative Stephanie Hilferty. Representative, you were the one who spoke out loud. Yours was the voice, I believe, on that tape saying, wait a second, there's no good side to slavery. Now, I understand that Representative Ray Garofalo, uh, who was the other guy, he, he walked back his statement. But still, what was going through your head when he was arguing there, we have to talk about the good from slavery? Unbelievable. But at the same time, I am not surprised. I'm not surprised. You know, uh, we have an election cycle that just ended about three months ago. Well, actually longer than that. Uh, I want to say November. So we're looking at six months ago. The election cycle ended. We also have uh, 100 days since Biden, President Biden was installed as president. We also are what little more than three months removed from the insurrection that took place in Capitol Hill. So a lot has happened. A lot has happened. But when we look at the Republican Party, and I know many Democrats will rail against the Republican Party because of the state of where the Republican Party is. But guess what? 
Democrats, you were the Republican Party at one time. You were the Republican Party at one time. Two wings on the same bird. Two wings on the same bird. There's no difference between the Democrats and the Republicans. And Malcolm X made it clear. He gave a perfect analogy. Not going to get into it uh, tonight, but I will make reference to it um, and let you hear exactly how he expressed it. So I'm not a Democrat. I'm not a Republican. I could care less for either one of these parties. The Democrats at one time. Right. Guess what? They were uh, fighting against your freedom. They were fighting against and actually they were advocates of the raping of our fathers, our mothers, our sons, our daughters. They were advocates for that. They were advocates of that. They were subjecting our people to these horrendous crimes along with the Republican Party. The difference between the two is one grew a conscience and decided that, hey, chattel slavery is not good. They grew a conscience. Chattel slavery is not good, but we're not going to look at them as being an equal to us, per se. You guys know the history of the Republican Party. It started with actually the Whig Party. That's a whole nother discussion. And then those same principles transition over to the Republican Party. Guys, we got a lot to cover tonight. We got a lot to cover tonight. So hit the like button, share the video. And for those that are not subscribed, subscribe. And if those that want to uh, sow into the ministry, feel free because uh, the cash app is at the bottom. I'm not you know, if, if that's up to you guys. I'm you, you guys know me. I'm not about the money uh, or anything, you know, but what we do is we do a lot for people um, with, you know, um, that's connected to our ministry. We, we do a lot of sewing into people. So if you want to sew into the ministry, feel free to do so. Appreciate you guys. But nevertheless, nevertheless. Good slavery. I'm going to show we're going to go over some stuff here just to reiterate a few things. Some of these some of the things I'm going to share, you guys know, I've been sharing this for years, but this is for those that may not be familiar. And then since we've been offline for a little while, it, I have to bring you guys back up to speed to what's going on. Good slavery. Good slavery. This person had the audacity to make the comment good slavery see they were they they were pushing or are pushing a bill to change how uh what happened to our ancestors change how it's communicated for example if you guys understand the daughters of the confederate right those are the daughters of the very people that fought to keep us enslaved if you understand the power of this this group, I believe they they were um, came together like 1894, somewhere around that timeline. They are the ones that started pushing the narrative, pushing, uh, watering down what happened to our ancestors, using terms like we were immigrants, using terms that or uh, comments that, hey, you know, we 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 were taken care of. We a roof was put over our head and our uh, they made sure we had a meal. Want to, you know, really paint a generic picture of what happened to our ancestors that were being raped, men being sodomized publicly, women being raped, many of them publicly, young girls being hang, hung upside down because they stood on their, uh, uh, on stood their ground and say they, they're not going to uh, sh reveal themselves, allow them to uh, display them naked in front of the people. 
all kinds of stories about this girls being hung upside down. And then while they're tied up, come dropped on their heads until they died. You had uh, situations of uh, them putting uh, spikes inside of a wooden barrel and then put our ancestors inside this wooden barrel and push it down the hill. And by the time that barrel gets to the bottom of that hill, our ancestors inside of it is like chopped meat inside this barrel. Taking our women and, you know, uh, cutting their stomachs open just to see and betting and seeing how long will she live and how long would the fetus survive once it's cut out of her stomach. I could go right down a list of understanding the pedophilia, raping our children. And yet we hear the stories, we hear the comments that good slavery. See, this is why I am so passionate about putting this truth out, putting this information out. We need to understand this information. We need to understand what really happened to our ancestors. If the Most High told Moses to rehearse what took place at one of the worst battles that Israel had to deal with, now it's the Amalekites, because the Amalekites did something cowardly in their art of war, their, the rules of engagement. They attacked Israel from behind. And that's where the senior citizens, the uh, women and children would normally travel behind. Those that may have had any type of disabilities, they travel at the rear. And the soldiers, the able men, they, they were at the front. So if they had to engage in battle, that's they were uh, they would face each other. So the Amalekites did what would be considered a terrorist act. They performed a terrorist act on Israel. And so the Most High gave Israel the strength to win this war. You remember, it said as long as um, Moses' arms were lifted up, Israel were winning. The elders, Aaron, Aharon, who was the high priest, her. Instead of uh, taking him to the tabernacle and then placing him on an altar, they built an altar to support him so that and lift, held his arms up while Joshua was in position leading the way. So the Most High told Moses to remember this, rehearse it. In other words, uh, over and over, remind them over and over, keep going over this over and over. But that commandment wasn't just for Joshua. It's, it was for any leader that was leading Israel. King Saul, this is why he, uh, the kingdom was taken away from him. The throne was taken away from him. Because he did not follow through with what he was set up to do to blot out the Amalekites. Instead, he began to uh, basically entered into an agreement with them. Like many of our brothers and sisters are entering into agreements with the very people that made a point to try to blot us out. But the most high with because of his promise he made to Abraham. About his seed. The Most High made sure that all, there was always a remnant remaining. Think about that, family. So we're supposed to rehearse this in the ears of our loved ones. So that way they are reminded of who they are, reminded of their purpose, reminded not even to what? Enter into agreement. With the very people that tried to blot us out. That's what the Amalekites made an attempt to do, to blot Israel out. By blotting Israel out, what they would have done is succeeded in killing the promised Messiah. It's a lot deeper than what you may read in your text. So again, what is good slavery? I'm going to touch on some things here. I'm going to pull some, pull a few things up and then I'll open it up for the, anyone that wants to jump on and share your thoughts. You guys know how we do here. 
But what is good slavery? What is good slavery? You know, we all are familiar with the Holocaust. We're familiar with the Holocaust. We know the Holocaust, uh, there was not six million that was killed in this Holocaust. That's a fact. And this is not trying to disrespect anyone or belittle what uh, transpired with that situation. The Holocaust, six million. But when you understand Auschwitz, right, the incinerators, right, the incinerators, right, the gas incinerators. If you look at the tablets, initially the tablet said four million. Now that four million is down to just over, I believe it's at one point two million. But it doesn't just say Jews. It says and others, because there's a fact there was over two hundred thousand of our people that was murdered along that numbers. The numbers could be even more. And we understand the actual Holocaust, right, was practiced in our community. That's a whole nother discussion. But let's go with let's go back to this example. Right. So Auschwitz, the numbers dropped by almost three million. Just that alone. So just that alone will take that six million down to no more than three million. At the max. The numbers were off, but nevertheless, would any one of these guys refer to the Holocaust as a good Holocaust? Would they what would happen if this person and others refer to that tragic situation as being a, you know, good, bad or the ugly? There's nothing good about innocent people losing their lives. That's a whole nother discussion, but I'm not trying to get deep into the Holocaust. But I want, want you to understand. Think about this. Three million people at the max. Three million people at the max. Now, let's look at our ancestors. Tens of millions died during the first leg of the transatlantic world war, not slave trade, world war. Many died just getting to that place. It was so bad for as blood inside the oceans. That sharks will follow the ships, birds will follow the path. Migrating to this area. Because tens of millions of our ancestors are in those waters. Died in those waters, eaten alive. So let's take three million. And compare it to tens of millions that lost their lives just to not not even those that have made it through it, but just those that have died. That was murdered. That was raped. That was kidnapped. That was in the actual definition of what rapture mean, because rapture means to kidnap. It means to rape. Our ancestors were raptured. And we hear the term good slavery. Good slavery. Another point I want to make. I made it earlier on Facebook. Think about what we have to go through. Think about what our ancestors had to go through over in the West Coast of Africa when they had to teach four and five year old babes how to survive if their village were raided and they were taken. They will teach their babes to run into the, the, the run into the woods, run and hide themselves. But guess what? Should they be captured and taken? Now the kids are on their own. They have to now try to find another village that they can go to. And many of them died in that process, eaten by the wildlife, eaten by uh, lions and wild dogs and, you know, uh, 
other animals that preyed on them. You think that's changed? We still this is what they had to do to uh, ensure that there was a, a plan in place to ensure that their seed survived. Guess what? It didn't change. We still doing that. We still have to prepare our children on how to handle themselves in front of police officers. Should they get pulled over? We have to teach our children things that are not inside the driver's manual. That's, that they, they won't learn in driver's aid, uh, ed. How to talk to the police officers, how to move, how to ask for permission, how to make sure that you broadcast every detail of your movement. And guess what? You many of our brothers and sisters lives were still taken in the process. Good slavery. Come on, guys. Good slavery. Good slavery. See, while we are focusing on the minor stuff, this is th these are the things that are taking place all around us. Guys, don't even don't even give your time to foolishness. Paul said, "Endless what genealogies? Guess what? Those that are opposing your identity are talking more about your identity than you." Fables, rumors. Don't get caught up in that because there's more. We have a purpose here. This is what we should be warning our brothers and sisters about. Every leader is supposed to be doing this right here, showing you, keeping you current on what's taking place so that way we can navigate through this stuff. We can see what's coming down the pike. So it didn't change. The behavior is still taking place. This is why I wanted to do this playbook tonight. I know it was the last minute. I didn't give you a chance to prepare and, you know, uh, save it. Every Thursday, the playbook will be here again on Sundays. Right. We're going to bring truth talk to Sundays and we're just going to go in like how we went this past Sunday. Shabbat. I'm going to rest on there and I'll uh, broadcast our service uh, live for the Shabbat. But overall, the two lives that we're going to focus on is on Thursday, same time and Sunday. Right. We're going to we're going to do like we did before around. Uh, we're going to shoot for three o'clock. All right. So let me pull up this presentation here. Let me let you. Let's let's go through a couple of things here and then we'll open up the floor here for those that want to share any comments. Good slavery. When did this occur? Now, I want to be clear for those that are seeing this for the first time. Those seven bullets represents the gunshots that Jacob Blake's had to that 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 he had an officer do to him, shot him seven times in his back. That's why you see those those seven bullet holes. To the right of there is what is called the fleur de lis. The reason why you see blood on it is because this is the very tool that they were branding our brothers and sisters with. Branding and we're going to deal with the mark of the beast. Matter of fact, we may deal with that this uh, Sunday at Truth Talk to really deal with what the mark of the beast is. But notice here. The blood on it. I put the blood on there purposely and we're going to I'm going to show you more about this here. But this is the Fleur de Lis, the New Orleans Saints emblem. Many th this this design is in many churches. Right. The Catholic Church has this design all through. Their their architecture, their, their architecture designs. See, this is also referred to the lotus flower, which was taken from. Uh, and a copy from the Egyptians. So the Catholic Church, I can't remember the um, the emperor at the time, the pope at the time. He and he loved the, that lotus flower. This symbol as well. So what he did was he, uh, as you can see here, the three points, right, these three petals. 
And as you can see, it looks like a flower. So each one, he assigned a label to it. Each one, one represents the Holy Spirit, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Each one of these. This represents the Trinity. Look it up, guys. I'm not making this up. This represents the Trinity. So when you see this symbol, this is supposed to be the Trinity. The Trinity. And they were branding this on our ancestors' bodies, forcing our ancestors to, to, to break the law by what? Marking our bodies. Remember, we're not supposed to put tattoos and uh, markings all over our bodies. That's the law. And they branded our ancestors, put their mark on our bodies. All right. So I just want to explain that. And this is one of the things that I say to our assembly, remind them over and over again, especially when I deal with identity. When you don't see and know your value, you allow others define it for you. See, that's the problem with our community. Most of us don't understand our value. The very people that have kidnapped, raped us, they understand our value. Every aspect of this government understand your value. Starting with the school systems. Most of you guys don't even know that just about every division one school, just about every major university had your ancestors, my ancestors as slaves. Georgetown had over 200 they, on record. They said they had 257 slaves and that they used to pay off debts and, you know, use it for collateral. But they had far more than that. They had far more than that. Every university. The Ivy League schools had your ancestors, my ancestors as slaves. They built those institutions off of our ancestors. I could go further than that. I could, I could really delve into that. And they want to offer reparations for who? The descendants of 254 slaves or 57 slaves? And our ancestors should be going to school for free, shouldn't have, should not have to pay for any school. If you are within the five generations of Native Americans, you could go to school for free no matter what the school is. Unfortunately, they made it hard for our community, many that have uh, some of that, uh, the Native Americans in your DNA, they made it hard for you to be able to what? Benefit from that. My great grandmother on my father's side is a full blooded Indian. Which means that my grandmother would be considered 50 percent. My father would be um, would be considered a quarter. Me, I will be considered an uh, 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 an eighth. My daughters will be considered a sixteenth. Then when they have children, they will be considered a 32nd. Guess what? We're supposed to be able to go to school for free. But because of the council that was created by the very ones that enslaved us, they began to purchase. They purchased their identity. They purchased a Native American identity. That's why if you look at the first council, guess what it looks like? Doesn't look like the, the, the doesn't the, the, those Indians or the Native Americans do not look like a reflection of us because they look just as dark as our, as we were. James Adair made it clear about that. This is where you get into the Gullah Wars. That's a whole nother discussion. I'll deal with that another time. Don't want to get too far into that. But they began to deny many of our brothers and sisters from getting that ID, thus forfeiting or not allowing you to benefit from free education and other things that came with the territory. All right. So again, <laughs> when you don't see and you don't know your value, 
you allow others define it for you. So when was slavery ever good for our people? I'm, I'm just trying to, you know, get some information from you guys. Maybe you guys can help me out here. When was slavery ever good for our people? Chattel slavery. When was it? When was chattel slavery ever good? Who was it good to? Who was chattel slavery good to? Next point I want to make. The more heritage is made universal, in other words, Catholic or generalized, so will the increase of creating blank spaces, blank spaces and filling them with constructs and descriptors that contradict it. Universal, Catholic, generic. That's what universal means. Take it a step further. It comes from the goddess Uni. The triple goddess, right? The Trinity, one of many trinities from the peg, different paganistic uh, communities out there. The Romans, the Greeks, the Babylonians, the Sumerians. I could go right down the list. But the more heritage is made universal. The Bible makes it clear. Genesis chapter 10 makes it clear what heritage is. Land, family and tongues. Land, family, and tongues, that is the heritage. Noah's sons, each one of them was given a, an, a, a heritage. They were given a heritage. Land, family, and tongues is the foundation of what constitutes a nation of, to being a nation. Look it up. And the key things that they did to our people is what? Stripped us of our land. Think about it. What are we arguing? Well, well, not we, but those that want to come against our community, they want to downplay the significance of what's the writings on the pews. They want you to forfeit uh, the history that's all that's connected to our community. It's language, right? This institution of racism redefined our social give us a, a completely different identity, a social identity that's based off of things that has nothing to do with land, family and tongues. <sighs> anyway. Let me give you some information. Let's start with the Middle Ages. I want you all to pay attention to this. This is coming from Oxford Dictionary. The Middle Ages. The period of European history. Let me say that again. Y'all better understand this. Middle Ages is not the antiquities. Middle Ages. Pay attention to this, guys. Look at what it says. When you say the Middle Ages, it's in your face to let you know. Whenever you say the Middle Ages, you are referring to European history, not your history. A one sided history of history. So when you understand Middle Ages, see, there's nothing good about being in the middle. That's why um, Christ made it clear. The Messiah made it clear. Let your yay be yay, your nay be nay. We see it in the scriptures, Luke, uh, hot or cold, right? One way or the other. But lukewarm, you sp that's not a good taste. Lukewarm is a terrible taste. I love me some oatmeal, but there's nothing like lukewarm oatmeal. Ugh. I don't even want to think about the thought of that. So Middle Ages. Look at what it says. Y'all write this down. Write this down. This is you won't. They won't tell you this in school. They won't tell you that the Middle Ages is actually the period. Of European history from the fall of the Roman Empire in the West, in other words, fifth century to the fall of Constantinople uh, in 1453 or more narrowly from the 10th century to 1453. Notice, notice this short period right here. See what they have. They, these educators in this system of religion have you to believe that the Middle Ages, you, you start connecting the Middle Ages to the antiquities. The Middle Ages, European history, and look at the period from the 10th to 1453. And notice we were enslaved at that time. 
1452 is when the edict was passed. We're going to deal with that here shortly. But look at what you see here. European history. But they have us what? Regurgitating their history. They have us self-checked because we'll automatically connect the Middle Ages to the antiquities, to the ancient times. No, look at what it says from the 10th century to 1453. But it didn't stop there. The earlier part of the period. Right. See, they refer to the Middle Ages as the 10th century from the 10th century to 1453. But five, the um, the 5th century to basically the 11th century. They refer to that as the Dark Ages. Notice what it says here. The earlier part of the period is sometimes distinguished as the Dark Ages, while the later part or the latter part is often thought of as the Middle Ages proper. Guess what? What they're not telling you here in this definition is that's when the Moors ruled Spain, the Iberian Peninsula. The Moors ruled that whole territory. So what took place, how they were conquered, is that uh, the Europeans in that area went out to the Khazars and entered an agreement with them. And the Khazars sent uh, like almost 40,000 soldiers to help defeat the Moors. <sighs> anyway, notice what it says. The earlier part of the period is sometimes distinguished as the Dark Ages, while the latter part is often thought at, of as the Middle Ages proper. So the Dark Ages, that, that's the time that they really don't want to talk to you about. The Dark Ages, <laughs> that's we see all that artwork that you see over there in the Iberian Peninsula. <laughs> right. That's where you, you know, you see all organized culture there. Sewers or sewages, all of those things there. People without lice, teeth brushed. Personal hygiene impeccable anyway let's go let, let's 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 move forward here let's let's deal with this some more let me take you to another piece of history as i highlight it's still part of the uh the transition of the middle ages because remember i said the middle ages uh up until like 1453 but let's see at the latter part of the middle ages let's see what this says here Let's see what this says here. Some of you guys are going to remember this, but I encourage you guys get this piece of uh, reference here, this source here. This, this, this is what I, I pull out a lot when I'm dealing with our history and showing everyone that has an ear and willing to hear the truth about what transpired. Now, notice here, I'm going to prove that the transatlantic so-called slave trade was actually a world war. It says this, Papal grants to the kings of Portugal, giving authority to enslave Saracens and other non-Christians of West Africa whom, with whom Christendom is at war. Look at the dates. 1452 between 1452 and four, uh, 1514 look at look at the dates but notice what it says there i should have highlighted it L look what it says i want y'all to pay attention it says christendom is at war Popple that tells you this the catholics guess what the the reformation movement Took, took place a couple of centuries after this so this tells you that guess what all of them was all together in this enslavement of our people. Papal grants, King of Portugal, the, the, the Roman Catholic Pope, who is the Pope of all Christianity, is nothing more than a offshoot of Catholicism. Christendom, you hear that term in Christianity, Christendom. That was being used before you heard the term Christi, uh, uh, Christianity. 
Christian Christendom is interchangeable with Catholic universal. Why? Because they wanted to make the word universal. They want to make their doctrine universal. Watering it down. This is where you get the word generic. Generic comes from the primitive root word or the Proto-Indo-European word gene means to beget. Tying all the way back to Genesis chapter three, the seed of the serpent and the seed of the woman. So the seed of the serpent want to make everything generic so that way it can what beget its seed into a place where its seed doesn't belong. And that's our heritage. That is our identity. But here we go. Let's read some more of this um, document here. Let's let's go a little further here. It says, with whom Christendom is at war, not slave trade, Christendom was at war. It goes on to say, in 1442, a Portuguese captain brought to the Gold Coast some Moorish prisoners of war, exchanged them for 10 Negro slaves. That's the first transaction that transitioned things from the Arabic slave trade going into the transatlantic world war. And brought these back to Lisbon, a trading settlement was established at Lagos by 1444. It would appear by 1452, the Portuguese were anxious to establish their property rights over their newly discovered West African territories. Let me read that part again. A, a territory that they didn't didn't own, but they're establishing property rights. They're dividing up spoils that belong to someone else. That's like you owning your house. You, uh, you know, paid for your house. You purchased this house. And then someone comes, a stranger comes and say that somebody else gave them permission to take your house from you. That's exactly what we see in here inside this document here. It would appear that by 1452, the Portuguese were anxious to establish their property rights over their newly discovered West African territory. And so the Pope Nicholas V, notice what it says, Pope Nicholas V, this is where you get St. Nicholas. This is where Santa Claus is. This is what Revelation talks about of the Nicolaites that he said he hates. The Nicolaites, their name means dest destruction of people, a very destructive doctrine. And they are what? All about destroying people. And look at what they, they have done to our people. So the Pope Nicholas V was approached and was apparently led to believe that these territories of the Guinea coast were inhabited by Saracens and other enemies of Christendom. But notice what it says here. There is no other explanation of a series of papal documents which applied the well-known contemporary rules of war. Let me say that again. They applied the well-known contemporary rules of war. Let me say that one more time. They applied. Let me say this. Let me make sure you guys um have this here. Let me make sure you let me read it. Read it for you again. It says. uh. There is no other explanation of a series of papal documents which apply to the well-known contemporary rules of war. What? Contemporary rules of war. As you see right here. What? Contemporary rules of war. It goes on to say. Actually, let me go back here. Contemporary rules of war to the situation in West Africa, whereas the Portuguese were well aware the local Negro inhabitants were not Saracens, were not Muslims and were not the enemies of Christendom. So they were not Saracens. Now I'll define this for you real quick. They were not Muslims and they were it says they were not the enemies of Christendom. Why? Because they were practicing Torah. They were practicing Torah. That's a fact. They were practicing Torah. They was honoring the law, statutes, and commandments. Some of them straight away, but they still had Torah embedded in their culture. So again, key quote from that article, I just highlighted. 
The local Negro inhabitants were not Saracens, were not Muslims. And let me just share with you who Saracens is real quick. It says Saracens in the Middle Ages, any person, notice what it says, Middle Ages, any person, Arab, Turk, or others who profess the religion of Islam. So this makes it clear that our ancestors who they enslaved were not professing the religion of Islam. They were not Arabs. They were not Turks. They were not professing the religion of Islam. <laughs> so many nuggets there. So the Saracens are Arabs and Turks. Uh, let me highlight this just a little, you know, just uh, one little point from here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, what do I want to highlight here? Notice what it says here. Church leaders. We already read this about the uh, Pope Nicholas. So you guys get this point. But it says here, the bottom bottom line, sentence here. Right. Church leaders. Right. Church who leaders argued that slavery served as a natural deterrent and Christianizing influence to barbarous behaviors among pagans. <laughs> see, the reason why you see the Roman Catholic Church so big in Africa is because of slavery. It's because of them forcing our ancestors to embrace this racist uh, uh, there's this this system, right? This group of races. Bad fact, they created the institution of race. So, yeah, you could call them racist, right? We can't be called racist because we didn't create this institution. The very people who created the institution were racist. Hmm. A lot of information here, guys. A lot of information here. If you guys can uh, hear me clearly, let me know. Just type one uh, because it looks like um, I want to make sure it doesn't look like it's locked up or anything like that, uh, because I know that uh, sometimes this thing can go in and out. So if you, got, if you guys can hear me clearly, just type one. All right. Just type one um, if you can hear me. Um, and if you have any issues, uh, uh, type two if you have any, any issues. All right. OK, great. All right. Just wanted to make sure family. All right. So let's let's uh, let me highlight a couple more things from here. And I'm going to share a couple of other things with you. And I'm going to open up the, uh, the the floor for you guys. All right. But it says Christians, right? Christians. Christians. Notice what it says. Church leaders, right? Church leaders argued that slavery served as a natural deterrent and Christianizing influence to barbarous behaviors among pagans. Using this logic, Pope issued a mandate to the Portuguese King Alfonso. So look at here. So Christianizing. So guess what? The Catholics were Christians. That term Christian wasn't just uh, uh, isolated uh, for what we see of today. The Roman Catholic Church called themselves Christians. Many of them want to put our community on the spot. We're the only community that's on the spot, right? They want to talk about what some of the brothers and sisters the, may believe. Some are Messianic, some non-Messianic, but they want to take the approach that our who we are is a religion. Guys, you got to make sure anyone you're talking to, you let them know this is not a religion. I make sure moment. The first thing I address is making it clear that me being an Israelite is not a religion. It's my ethnicity. Wasn't because I practice in Judaism. I don't practice Judaism. Wasn't because uh, I just suddenly uh, got an epiphany and decided to refer. No. Family tradition. And also my DNA confirmed it. What else? Don't need to say any more. Historical facts proves this. So don't get don't get pulled in trying to defend religion. 
Matter of fact, don't even get sucked into it at all. But they said slavery is uh, slavery served as a natural deterrent and and Christianizing influence to barbarous behaviors among pagans. But this is the last point I want to um, highlight here. Notice here. Let me go back here. It says here. Look at what it says. This is the part I want to highlight. To reduce their persons to perpetual slavery. Let me say that again. To reduce their present their persons to perpetual slavery, not indentured servitude, perpetual slavery to apply and appropriate to himself and successors, the kingdoms, dukedoms, counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, and goods, and to convert them to his and use the, uh, and their use and profit. Let me sh sh you know, share this again. Let me read this again. It says, and to convert them to his and their use and profit. <laughs> let me go back here again. Uh, let me read this again. To invade, search out, capture, vanquish, and subdue all uh, Saracens and pagans whatsoever and to reduce their persons to perpetual slavery and to apply and appropriate to himself and to his successors, the kingdoms, dukedoms, counties, principalities, dominions, possessions, and goods, and to convert them to his and their use and profit. Convert them. Let me share with you just how I guess, good in their minds, slavery was. Let's deal with the middle passage. PBS.org, right? It says, for weeks, months, sometimes as long as a year, they waited in dungeons of the slave factories scattered along Africa's western coast. They had already made the long, difficult journey from Africa's interior, but just barely. Out of the roughly 20 million who were taken from their homes and sold into slavery, half didn't complete the journey to the African coast, most dying along the way, even though it was far more than 20 million people. But it says most didn't even, most died along the way. Most didn't even make it past that first leg. And it says, and the worst was yet to come. The worst was yet to come. They would be in these, uh, the, the, these uh, barracones or, you know, they're, they, they will be held in this dungeon as much as, as as long as a year. Right. This is what we did with the word cone. Remember, I mentioned the Whig Party, right? The, the, the Republicans before before the Republicans, the Whig Party. Right. This is why I don't like using this term. The now insulting U.S. meaning black person was used by uh, was used and I mean was in use by 1837 to be from Barracoon 1837 from Portuguese Baraka slave depot pen or rough enclosure for black slaves in transit uh, in West Africa Brazil and Cuba and this is how they had this is what they had us crammed up inside of you still have these down in Georgia and different places. They had our ancestors packed into this place right here. Sick. They were sick. Many. They, they, sick. I'm not even going to get into the description of this because it'll, it'll 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 really make your stomach churn. But let's go back here. Let me show you more. Uh, read some more um, from this article here. Let me just touch on this a little bit more, and um, and we'll 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 highlight a couple of other things, and that'll be it. And we'll open it up. So the captives were about to embark on the infamous Middle Passage, so-called because it was the middle leg of a three-part voyage, a voyage that began and ended in Europe. The first leg of the voyage carried a cargo that often included iron, cloth, brandy, firearms, and gunpowder. Upon landing on Africa's slave coast, the cargo was exchanged for Africans, our ancestors fully loaded with 
It's human cargo. The ship set sail for the Americas where the slaves were exchanged for sugar, tobacco, or some other product. All right. The slaves were branded. Notice what it says. The slaves were branded with hot irons and restrained with shackles. That's what they were branded with, that floor de lis. The floor de lis. Our ancestors could not buy or sell. This made it clear that you were property. The mark of a renewed system that extended beyond what we see today, beyond the Romans and beyond the Greeks. The slaves were branded with hot irons and restrained with shackles. They were branding them. They were also used this to, to cut their hamstrings for the slaves that were running away. They will also castrate them with this. They'll cut their part of their ears off. They will actually deform their face with this, put brand, this mark on their face. They'll use the tip of that to split their nose in half and then put their face over fire. So that way it also, uh, that's, but yet you want to talk about good slavery. Good slavery. Good slavery. Good slavery. Good slavery, guys. This is what they call a good slavery. I'm still trying to understand what's good about what I just shared with you. Good slavery, family. Good slavery. That's right. This is the New Orleans Saints symbol. The New Orleans Saints symbol. Nat Turner, your cousin. Our brother, who was betrayed by his own people, by his own people, who was, uh, they they sodomized, they did all kinds of stuff to Nat Turner, made him into uh, grease. But he also took his body parts, parts of his body parts, and made souvenirs out of it. Did all kinds of uh, uh, stuff you can... <laughs> Stuff you wouldn't believe that they were doing to our ancestors at that time. Hmm. Unfortunately, man. Uh, unfortunately. But Nat Turner understood the truth. That's what made him dangerous. He understood the truth. Even though they were modifying the Bible that he had, he was still able to see the truth inside that Bible. That we are not supposed to be uh, 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 subjected to the stuff that we were subjected to. And he made a point to try to liberate our people. What happened? What happened? What happened? The spirit of meritorious manumission. We still see that spirit thriving today. Meritorious manumission. One person trying to see how they can benefit at the expense of everyone. And many times that person that tried to get that 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 reward were killed too. Meritorial manumission did a lot to our people. It un it, it literally um you know literally shut down so many uh, stopped so many um, insurrections because of that law that was passed. That hey, if you help massa. From danger, if you help massive, if you expose uh, your own people trying to get out of this harsh system, trying to get free, trying to uh, become who they know that they are and should be and get out of this oppressive treatment. You know what? You let us know. We'll reward you. That's what they were doing. That's right. My my, my too much for you. That's right. But they want to say. That's the past. But yet the scripture tells us even Paul was told to put them in remembrance from whence they came. So don't let anyone lie to you and tell you that's the past. Don't let these people that call themselves defending. The Bible tell you that what I'm sharing with you is the past. Get over it. No, it's not the past. 
It's still the presence because we are we are still dealing with the re repercussions of these actions. But the Most High got a plan, guys. He has a plan. So when was slavery ever, ever good for us? Excuse the typo here. It says every, but when was slavery ever good for our people? So I dealt with the Roman Catholic Church, right? We dealt with Christianity. We know that the Muslims benefited from this. We know the Hindus on uh, uh, India um, benefited from this. I got some stuff that I'm working on. I'm going to present this to you guys. We know they benefited from this. China, they benefited from this. But it's one group of people we don't hear about. Let me show you here. Some of you guys may remember this, but I'm going to share with you just a little bit. Right? Before we get to that group of people, let me just share just a little bit more about what they were doing to our people. Some of you guys remember this. I touched on this a while back, uh, dealing with the de debunking the Irish were in chattel slavery. This is what it says. This was not an easy task. But these Englishmen did have a number of Irish prisoners serving various sentences. They decided on a way for these Irish prisoners to work off their sentences on Barbados sugar plantations. They sent out thousands of indentured Irish prisoners to Barbados. They were not in chattel slavery. These were prisoners. These were criminals who were uh, indentured servants who helped build <laughs> this country. Who helped build other countries. But these were prisoners. These were criminals. Let me read it one more time for the for the people in the back. It says this, but these Englishmen did have a number of Irish prisoners serving various sentences. They were in trouble with the law. They decided on a way for these Irish prisoners to work off their sentences on Barbados sugar plantations. They sent thousands of indentured Irish prisoners to Barbados. But here's the kicker. Between 1627 and 1807, more than 400,000 Africans, mainly originating from West Africa, had been brought to Barbados as slaves to work on the sugar plantations. The English planters would request and receive more slaves whenever they believed they need more for the plantation. In other words, they were using our people as parts to this machine. If you guys do the study on sugar plantations, that was like the worst plantation for a slave to ever be sent to because that machine mangled so many of our ancestors ripping arms off and they were tossing them aside like they were like they were changing parts to a machine notice what it says here the africans were viewed as nothing more than interchangeable machine parts in the process of sugar production the treatment experienced by the africans was among the most inhumane in human history so they want us to talk about good slavery <laughs> they want us to talk about good slavery. Can somebody help me out here? Can somebody help me out here? Did so far did I highlight anything good about being kidnapped, being subjected to uh this the slavery that we were subjected to? Can some can somebody help me out? Can somebody help me out? We're not dealing with indentured servitude, we're dealing with chattel slavery. There's a difference, and the Bible makes difference between the two. I'm still I'm still trying to figure out where it, what's good about it. So it says the treatment experienced by Africans was among the most inhumane in human history. So no matter what thing that you can think of, of different groups of people dealing with, they never had to deal with what our people had to deal with. Fact. That's what this is saying here. But how come we're not hearing about the good uh, the good Hiroshima. Right. You know, because the bomb was um, um, the nuclear bomb was dropped on uh, the the on Hiroshima. We're not calling that the good bombing. Um, um, when we look at what happened to uh, what's that? Um, Pearl Harbor. Right. When the Japanese. Bomb Pearl Harbor. It's not viewed as a good bombing. What's, there's nothing good that you can look at that whole situation about when you're seeing that people lost their lives. 
good slavery. Only our community that they would make the associate these foolish terms with good slavery. Come on, guys, we got We got to be real with this thing. Good slavery. In my Allen Iverson voice practice. <laughs> we talking about practice. Not the game, but practice. That, I, I, I'm just thinking of that channeling my Allen Iverson practice voice. S -s -s good slavery. You talking about good slavery. Tens of millions of people kidnapped. Tens of millions of people died, murdered. Tens of millions of people. Stripped of their identity and you saying good slavery. That wasn't a slip up family. But let's continue. It says, and this is one of the things I want to make clear here. Notice what it says. Christians had us as slaves. Christianity, Catholicism had us as slaves. Look at what it says. Bar the Barbados Slave Code 1661 declared if any Negro or slave whatsoever shall offer any violence to any Christian by striking or the like or the like such Negro or slave shall for his or her first offense be severely whipped by the constable. But notice what it says here. For his second offense of that nature, he shall be severely whipped. His nose slit. Notice what it says. Nose slit. In other words, in half, a, a, a slice in half, sl a slit with a floor de lis, the edges of the floor de lis slit to be and be burned in some part of his face with a hot iron. But notice what it says here in the sub entry here. And being brutish, slaves. They deserve not for the baseness of their condition to be tried by the legal trial of 12 men. Notice what they're saying. This is still playing out today. Their peers as the subjects of England are. They're saying we don't afford it. We're not afforded any benefits. We're not afforded any benefits. This is still happening right now. I'm going to break down these laws to you. The difference between natural law and positive law. We're going to deal not tonight, though. That, that's a lot to cover, but we're not going to deal with it tonight. But I'm going to I'm going, I'm going to break that down for you to show you the foundation of this government. And it is further enacted and ordained that if any Negro or other slave under punishment by his master, unfortunately, shall suffer in life or member, which seldom happens no person whatsoever shall be liable to f any fine thereof or therefore. So saying that, hey, they could murder us. This is th this behavior didn't just start happening. It's a culture that's been going on for centuries. For centuries. But let me highlight one more group who benefited from us. Let me let me show you another group that benefited from our enslavement. Yes, you see it right here. The Jews and Judaism in the United States, a documented history by Rabbi Mark Lee Raphael. So this is not me making this up. You guys could get this book right here. 1983. But look, who, look who wrote it. Rabbi Mark Lee Raphael. This is not me. Jews and Judaism in the United States, a documented history. Let me give you a little bit and then we're going to open it up here. We're going to go to page 14. I'm going to read quotes from page, um, page between pages 23 and to 25. It says this Jews also took part, excuse me, Jews also took an active part in the Dutch colonial slave trade. Indeed, the bylaws of the recipe and, uh, you know, you got to get it. I'm not going to butcher all of this, but, uh, uh, I, you know, includes uh, included a an imposter. In other words, a Jewish tax of five soldos for each Negro slave a Brazilian Jew purchased. 
I'm not going to butcher some of these, you know, Spanish is not my specialty. So I'm not going to, so I'm going to skip over a couple of those words there. So I don't want to uh, butcher some of these, but nevertheless, but you see here, they were selling our brothers and sisters and adding a tax on it. But look at what it says. It says slave, a, uh, it says, uh, Included an apostle, in other words, a Jewish tax of five soldos for each Negro slave a Brazilian Jew purchased. From the West Indies Company, slave auctions were postponed if they fell on a Jewish holiday. And it goes on to say, as uh, in Caracchio uh, in the 17th century, and again, forgive me if I'm butchering some of these words, but nevertheless, it says, as well as in the British col uh, colonies of Barbados. In Jamaica, in the 18th century, Jewish merchants played a major role in the slave trade. Let me say that again. It says Jewish merchants played a major role, not a minor role, a major role in the slave trade. In fact, in all the American colonies, whether French, British or Dutch, Jewish merchants frequently dominated. This was no less true on the North American mainland, where during the 18th century, Jews participated in the triangular trade that brought slaves from Africa to the West Indies. So you see that they were they were all, you know, they benefited. They dominated, as it says here. And it gives you some of the people that dominated David, um, David Franks, Aaron Lopez. And it says dominated Jews, um, dominated Jewish slaves, slave trading on the American continent. Right. So I'm just skimming to do this because I don't want to take too much more time going through this. But you see, matter of fact, going back here, it says the Jews played a significant role in the merchant capitalism, commercial revolution and territorial expansion that developed the new world and established the colonial economic uh, eco economies, rather. But then it goes on to say the Jewish Caribbean nexus provided Jews with the opportunity to claim a disproportionate influence in the 17th, the 18th century, New World commerce and enabled West Indian Jewry far outnumbering its co-religionists further north to enjoy a sensual. Man, let me, I don't even have to go through this. Because you see, it was good for everybody but us. This the this the history that you won't hear them talk about. This is the history they won't they will not talk about. They want to down you. They want to down me. They created that's right, Yah's jury. The eighty third book of Psalms, this crafty council, all all of the enemies of Israel, Israel's crazy cousins, the Edomites, the Moabites. The Ishmaelites, we could go right down a list, came and created a, 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 con, a council to wipe out the reputation of Israel. Israel's reputation was depending on the most high. Look at what we have today. This council didn't end. You had the Roman Catholics teaming up with the Muslims, the Moors. They teamed up with other communities to come against our community. We still see it today. We still see it today. The Roman Catholics, because remember, right? The Pope met with Christian leaders. The Pope met with Christian leaders. They're not at war. The Pope met with Christian leaders. This is why you see the influence, right? The influence is all up in the church. Look at the regalia that is being worn. All it is is Roman Catholic garments. Teaming up right now. All the things that are going on, but we the worst of the worst. They don't go after the Portuguese. They don't go after the... The Jewish community, the, this group of people, they don't go after the more on um, the, the the Mormons. They don't go after the Hindus. They, they don't go after anybody but our community, 
anything but the Negro. <laughs> anyway. It's sad. We see the crafty council right before our eyes. They, it's all a hustle to them. It's all about money. This is why, guys, don't even don't don't even give them your time. Because we got bigger things to deal with. That's making sure, sure our people get the alarm, sound the alarm. We got bigger things to deal with. Let's let's leave that 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 stuff alone. We got bigger things to deal with. Let the most high sort out the rest of that. Let them sort it out. Right. I think that's it with this slide. Let me see here. Uh, I'm not going to go into all of this. But this is this book right here has a lot of information in it. Right. So I'm I'm, I'm not going to go too far into it. I'm going to stop right here in terms of um, using this reference. All right. So I just thought I'd take a little time out to uh, bring this reference to your, I mean, not just this reference, but talk about and deal with good slavery. So you understand what's happening in these chambers that many of us are ignoring. We still have to pay attention to what's going on family. Whether you choose to vote or not, you still need to know what's going on around us. You know, Moses was raised in the Egyptian system. That's how he knew how to get to Pharaoh. Joseph was in the Egyptian system. Daniel and his three friends, they were in the uh, Babylonian system. That's how they knew how to move around and maneuver. So we still have to understand that even with all of that, there's still no excuse on why we are not standing our ground. While we're not saying, just like Daniel said, it said, the scripture says in Daniel chapter one, but Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself. We have to take that same stand. They were in the land of captivity. They were kidnapped. They were taken into slavery. They were forced to go to the educational systems. But they got to a place, got to a point and say, you know what? Nah, we're not going to cross this line. You know what? I'm not going to eat this food that's sacrificed to your gods. We're not going to. You know what? I'm going to I'm going to draw the line. We're going to draw the line, guys. We, when they play this music, when they try to get us to worship their idols, we're not going to do it. Guess what? Israelites sold out during that time and many of them began to worship that idol. But this remnant didn't. Guys, you are the remnant. You are the remnant. All right. So I'm going to put the link inside the. The chat here and we're going to wrap it up here. I want to put the link here. So that way you guys, any any one of you guys can jump in if you want to share any comments. I want to jump. I'm going to, I'm going to drop the link here. Feel free to jump on in. There's the link. And so let me see. Uh, looks like my animations are not working good here. It looks like my browser is acting up. So I tried to play an animation earlier. But let's see if it works here. Let me see if this three piece works. That's right. We got to give it a three piece. I guess it wasn't meant for me to use it early because now it's working. We have to toss out uh, foolishness like good slavery. We have to toss this out. Let me give it one more three piece. And for those that have jumped in um, late, I'm just going to replay that uh, a 60 second video. So you understand what we're discussing here tonight as we get ready to wrap up. And again, for those anyone that want to jump in, uh, want to share your thoughts, I'll put the link inside the comment section or the um, chat. Come on in if you want to share your thoughts on what we on the topic of tonight. All right. But let's be respectful in how we uh, articulate ourselves. You know, let's be very respectful. Let's be the light that we are called to be. But this is the video for those that came in late. If you're having a discussion on whatever the case may be on slavery, then you can talk about everything dealing with slavery, the good, the bad, the ugly, 
the there's, whole. There's no good to slavery, though. Well, then w whatever, whatever the case may be. So that exchange has gone viral after a Republican state lawmaker in Louisiana argued that public schools and colleges should teach the, and you heard him say it, the good part of slavery. The good part. The state rep was pushing an education bill he proposed that would bar divisive concepts such as racism and sexism from classrooms. I want to bring in Louisiana State Representative Stephanie Hilferty. Representative, you were the one who spoke out loud. Yours was the voice, I believe, on that tape saying, wait a second, there's no good side to slavery. Now, I understand that Representative Ray Garofalo, uh, who was the other guy, he, he walked back his statement. But still, what was going through your head when he was arguing there, we have to talk about the good from slavery? All right, so that's what we're talking about. That was the discussion tonight. Oh, man, got my buddy here. Let me bring on my buddy, Jay Heistow. Let me bring him on. Man, hey, hey, how's it going? My buddy right here, my, my buddy, Jay Heistow. How you doing, man? I'm doing okay, Pastor. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. It's a blessing, and thank you for that um, encouraging email that I received earlier. I really appreciate it. I'm not sure if you got my, my response. I sent you a response, but I really appreciate you not a problem we, we got to stick together for sure um unity is key for, for us you know um we definitely have to stick together um even, especially in times like this i mean you see what's going on and um it's just crazy um the only way we're going to make it through this is if we stick together with the most high on our side Absolutely. Absolutely. And when you heard that thought of uh, that quote of uh, good slavery, you know, what, what you know, how, how, when you first heard or saw it, how, how did it what come what came to your mind when you saw that good slavery? And, um, even our enemies in the end it won't be good for them either because the most high is going to uh look for every content from them yeah yeah i tell you so yeah it's not good all the way around yeah it, and it's really not surprising you know when you think about it especially when we see all the things play out uh you know when i first heard the uh the discussion and i saw that i was like wow I was like, wow, that that says a lot to where we are for something so tragic to be referred to as good. I'm like, wow, how can you even uh, say something like that? But at the same time, it, it doesn't surprise me. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Yeah, definitely. And um and, and it's no coincidence, right? Right after we hit the two hundred, uh, I mean four hundred year prophecy, things began to shift. And um it's not looking good for them, as you pointed out, uh, because of uh, more and more we're becoming aware and we're just saying enough is enough. And we're 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 seeking the most high for the solution, not just trying to uh create the solution ourselves. We're going to this we're really uh crying out to the most high like how our ancestors did in Egypt. Yes, and, and, and of course the most high is key. Um uh, scripture tells us if we are if, if my people which are called by my name to humble themselves and pray, turn from their wicked ways, seek my faith, right? Then he'll heal from heaven, forgive us of our sins and heal our land. Um so, yeah, God is true to his word, and um, we got to have faith in what he tells us to do and just do it. Um, not trying to sound like Nike or anything like that, uh, but, yeah, we just got to uh, follow the way and the will of God, you know. Um, and one way we do that is by uniting as one. Um, we got to we gotta be more and more united. Um 
uh, I, I was saying in the chat how I just recently had a dream where um, Israel was coming more and more together. And through us coming more and more together, we, we did nothing but prosper and grow uh, as a people. And um, so, so there's actually two facets um, of us uh, conquering this. And that is, first of all, to get on the most high side, and secondly, for us to unite together as one. Absolutely. And um, even thinking about you saying you had a dream of Israel becoming um, un uh, coming together in unity, I think about Ezekiel chapter 37. You know, the bones were scattered, you know, and to the point that the prophet didn't even know that that was Israel. But you start seeing how... Uh, the bones start coming together and right, right, right. the process, it was still a process that the prophet had to continue, continuously speak life. Cause as the bones came together, it still, you know, still looked like the hope wasn't there, but then you saw the, 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 the flesh and everything. It was still a process. It wasn't just a, a flip of a switch, but it was a process. But like you pointed out, uh, he was, he, he witnessed through the words of, uh, that was being spoken that, Israel began to become unified. They began to come one. They began to be identified and recognized, you know, in this valley. And it kind of is parallel to where we are today, that we're coming together. The more and more we come together, we're starting to understand who we are. We also be, are, are becoming identifiable now. You know what I mean? Because, right, right, right. again, the prophet didn't know that that was Israel that was scattered because they were just all over the place. So it made me just when when you shared that about your dream, it made me think about Ezekiel. Yeah, and and, and in particular, my dream, you were in my dream, actually. <laughs> I didn't mention that, but you um also who else? Uh Sister E, um uh, Tail Ministries. Um, we were all online together and I, I mean we just had one big old um open forum and um we, we were just you could tell that there was just unity there. And um, we, of course, we got to go beyond this platform because, you know, this platform doesn't look to us any good. If anything, it looks to shut us up. Um, so definitely we have to go beyond this platform. And I hope I'm not getting into trouble right now by saying that. But, um, yeah, we, we have to seek out our own way of doing things. Uh, my mom used to always tell me growing up that, uh, God blesses the child that has his own. And uh, we, we got to start developing our own and, and, and come together as people. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I definitely will uh, talk to you about that offline because I am working on uh, a platform. And no, you're not getting us in trouble. I'm, because I'm at a point now, I'm just tired of having to feel like we have to talk around. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, right. we should be able to express ourselves the way that we uh, express ourselves. It should not be, uh, we should not have to filter what we say. So I am working on something and I, 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 I will definitely uh, get with you offline and uh, send you some information about it before I actually uh, make it public on the name and what it is. But it's to offer a platform, a social media platform uh, for our people with, with um, streaming videos and everything. Uh, but we have to start, like you said, we have to start by coming together and just have that that will, that that want to come out of um, the exodus out of these systems of suppression. Right, right. And, you know, um, since I'm on here, you know, since, since it's my first time, I definitely want to commend you, my brother, for doing such an awesome job, you know, um, staying to the task and um, being so informative uh, with your lessons. Truly, they are not only informative, but inspiring as well. Um, and, and to you, I, I pray that uh, the Most High continues to bless you um, in this endeavor and that uh, you, you just continue to bring it out for us. <laughs> uh, well, I appreciate you too, my brother. And um, thank you again. When I saw your email earlier, it really blessed me. Uh, it really blessed me. And I thank the Most High for you praying um, and, and just uh, just being obedient to him and just sending that email uh, because um, sometimes people really don't not really understand what leaders go through and that even like leaders need encouragement too. 
I mean, Christ told his disciples to pray and encourage him and they fell asleep on him a few times. But but but, you know, he even needed to be comforted because remember, he even said that um, Moses and, you know, they came and comforted him in the garden. So mm-hmm. every last one of us uh, have a moment in our life that we can use a word of encouragement, regardless of who we are. And I thank you for being obedient to, to the most high spirit. I would have it no other way. That's my lifestyle. Would have yeah, it no other way. Man, and you know, I love you. I, you know, I love your name. You know, I said that from day one. I was like, Jay High Style, wait a minute. That's you know, that's that's my break yeah. dancing. You know, that you know, that made me think about the 80s, you know. Right, right. Yeah, that <laughs> name does go all the way back. Old school, definitely old school. You know, uh-huh. that's kept it ever since, you know. Uh I've been using it as my computer name, so here I am. <laughs> uh, did, did did you break dancing all of that or oh no <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I was too much in the book i was i was too much academically inclined you know i mean i i have my doctorate now even, so, <laughs> yeah that tells you how much i love school so yeah oh well doctor i really appreciate you um taking the time out and um mm-hmm. You know, Absolutely. jumping on um, with the invite, I really appreciate it, and I know everyone that's that's watching, they they're excited to see you on the the screen here. They, you know, I thought I hey, saw um, her mom <laughs> say say hello to you, and yeah, uh, I yeah. think I see a few people saying hey, hello, hello to you. Yeah, you know, and um, we we you know I'm excited. look forward I, to having really, you on here I'm, more. Yes, I'm excited. I I, I may not show it too much, <laughs> you know, because. I got a calm demeanor, um, but I, I'm really excited about what's happening to Israel right now, and um, I'm praying and I'm looking forward to the best for us as a nation. And it's coming. You know, just sit yeah. tight. It's coming. Yeah, yeah. Well, man, I'm, I'm I'm feeling bad here. Let me just go ahead and um, I'm uh, start my cam because you you here with your cam open. I was like, let me open my cam <laughs> up. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, I right, was right. I was. Uh, you know, I had my cam off just to, you know, not even thinking. I was like, hey, let me turn my cam mm-hmm. on. My brother Jay showing his face. Let me show my face with you. Yeah, but you um, my brother, I, I really appreciate you. And, um, you know, again, as you pointed out, unity, unity. Mm-hmm. That's what we need. Absolutely. Unity, you know, in spite of differences, we're going to have differences. And Nehemiah understood that. But the number one thing was let's build a wall. Let's fortify this city, and then we can deal with our differences afterwards. Right. You no, know, and we right. do it in a way that it's internal, not for everyone mm-hmm. else to see. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's right. I absolutely agree with you. How they say, um, agree to disagree. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, do you have a YouTube channel or anything, J High Style? You just kind of. Oh no. You know, Okay. I'm just in the background. I'm sure you know that. you, Sister E, Tail Ministry. I'm just in the background, you know, just chatting with Israel, you know, just keeping our encouragement going, you know. Um, that's me. I'm well, my brother, I appreciate you. I really appreciate you. And I know everyone appreciates you as well. And um, we're going to, the next time we're going to do this is going to be this upcoming Sunday at three. If you're available, feel free to jump on. We're going to deal with a hot topic then. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, okay. we're, going to, we're going to deal with a hot topic. We're going to deal with um, the mark of the beast, and we're going to deal with unnatural affection. Okay. Okay. And, um, Sounds good. really appreciate you. And um, I'm going to bring on Dora, Dora L. here. If you want, you can stay You can stay on, or, but if you have to go, I definitely understand. I'm going to bring Dora L. on, and uh, okay. you know, let, let's see, see what he, he wants to bring to the table tonight. I know a lot of people probably seen his name, but really – haven't heard him speak before. So I'm gonna bring him on here. Greetings, greetings, family. Greetings, Hello. my brother, Dora L. How are you, my brother? I'm doing wonderful. I just wanna pass on some reading materials for our family to, to really grasp these things. Uh, whatever you can find about epigenetics, read up about that because the scripture says, your forefathers' sins impact you. In epigenetics, they've proven scientifically that, yes, things are passed down from your forebearers that impact you. 
and also Battle Fatigue, Racial Battle Fatigue by William Smith. He's a a uh, a he's a uh, scientist and researcher out of Utah, and he's actually developed and seen through the statistics and studies that racially, whenever we're around white people or I like to say pale people actually, because they're not really white, they're pale. Uh, they impact us, our, 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 our demeanors change. We have, a, 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 our hearts beat faster. We, we, our, our attitudes change. So that, that they impact us, you know, you know and we, we, we're not even aware of these things a lot of the times, but that, that's something that will help us to, to further grasp that the enemy ain't your friend, never your friend. <laughs> well, you, you, you hit on something that's key. Um, and with the first book that you mentioned, and um, I remember doing a teaching and I, I researched that as, as well. And that's when, um, when I came across Emory University study um, proving that generational curses uh, are real that the traumatic experiences that you can be that that you're you know that you can experience that right now right you could experience something right now and it literally uh alters your reproductive system yeah so when you have children they can inherit your phobias you know your fears without having to go through what you went through Right. Now, we didn't go through the same thing that our ancestors went through, but we are going through some things. Right. But think about what you just said, the natural phobias, because what they did was they subjected mice in their experiment to the, to electrical shocks and loud noises. So and every time they smelt the scent that was like a, a sweet scent, like cherry blossom, every time they smelt that scent, they shocked them and they played these loud noises. So to make them fear uh, or get nervous uh, and antsy, like you pointed out, uh, which, which, which the um, point that you made, that every time they smelt the scent, they got nervous. Every time they smelt the scent, they panicked. So they proved in this experiment that whatever experiences that we go through, right, those behaviors can be handed down genetically. And we even see that in the scriptures, right? When Adam and Eve sinned, their genetic makeup changed. And we there was no murder at that time, but we saw that seed germinated with Cain and he slayed his brother Abel. So that's, yeah. a, that's a great point that you made. Yeah, I bring that up too, because we have some people in our community and even those in Christianity would teach, oh, there's no such thing as generational curses. But science has proven that, that that's not true. So that's you, you, what what your four par parents have gone through affects you. You know, uh, if you're if you're if your mother was a drug addict, more than likely you'd be one. <laughs> you know, that's just a simple way to uh, you know to prove that that's true. So you know, we, but you know, when you have people t these days with these, like you say, these doctrines of devils, basically, uh, they try to discount a lot of things. And that's why I suggest that uh, our family read about epigenetics. These things are real. These things are proven scientifically. Uh, racial battle fatigue. Uh, the, the gentleman, uh, William Smith, when he when he was doing the research, he saw his himself in the data. He said he said he would, you know, microaggression. That anything about microaggressions, because these are these are uh, like I said before, when 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 pale people get in our presence, you know, we we. We tap dance. We 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 change our characteristics. That's an epigenetic uh, microaggression. You know, that's something that is you're not acting like you would act normally. So that's making you act against your normal. Uh, you, you know, the, what, how you would, would act in a normal situation. So that's 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 doing something of a damage to your system. You know, to your your blood pressure. Your your <laughs> Your, your mentality, you know, these, these things are affecting us. And uh, uh, something else I, I want to say, because what I keep... What I keep hey, 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 Doral, before you, before you bring up that other, that other point you can bring up, wow. hey, Jay, did you want to chime in? Did you, anything you want to add to what uh, Doral just pointed out? 
Yeah, um, in particular, as far as generational curses, um, and someone brought this up in the chat earlier, that um, when it comes to the curses, are we all still underneath the curses? And my reply to that is no, uh, because uh, Christ died for the remission of our sins. And who the Son set free is free indeed. Uh, so those curses, they do come to an end once you're in Christ. Um, you know, that old saying, the things I used to do, I don't do them no more. Places I used to go, I don't go there anymore. Why? Because I have a new way of living. I believe in something new now, and it's bringing about what? A newness in my life. Uh, so um, I, I believe in uh, about the general, generational curses, curses to an extent, uh, but you as a person, as a a, a child of the Most High God who believes in His Son um, can be set free from those generational curses. And you know, to that point, um, even in that research, they do make it a, a note that you can undo um, these bad behaviors by right. practicing and experiencing good events. You know, so that that's that's one of the keys to the um the the research is that we can change by what's shifting. That Paul said it best: be be not transformed to this world, but be oh. re, uh, um be well be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Only that's Romans yeah. chapter twelve, verse two. So mm -hmm. renewing of what our mind, refreshing of our mind. So when you refresh something. You know, if it locks up, it takes it right back to where it was. So if we refresh, you know, and get, get, you know, we are able to purge these things out of us by way of the Holy oh, Spirit. And of course, we have to accept Christ. So that great point that you made, um, Dor L, you was going to see something else? Yeah, well, I, I just to push back a little bit, not a whole lot, but just a little bit. You know, that's like having a winning lottery ticket and never turning it in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, you ain't aware until you turn it in. OK, <laughs> so, you know, basically, you know, you, like you said, uh, you, you have to, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we're, we're only able to refresh ourselves by re by reading. You know, that's why I say. Manjicate and educate is the same thing. Manjicate is your mouth chewing. Educate is your mind chewing knowledge. OK, so it's the same thing. One is by mouth. One is by your brain. So that's where you educate is really is talking about. Your brain is chewing. OK, it's, it's chomping down on bits information. So we, we just want to keep, uh, you know, that we have to accept to change. And we have to do that, like I said, by by reading. And like I said, if I want to, you know, the, the thing about our people is that we think in that we all our knowledge is just going to be based upon reading scripture. No, you have to read outside of scripture because there's other information that you need in order to transform your brain from being because you, what do they call it? They also call it. Uh, uh, what's the other word? Uh, uh, the word I'm looking for. Uh, um, Muscle. This is uh, no, word. no. I know, I know it's another medical <laughs> term, but just keep it simple. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a brainwashing. It's conditioning. That's what I'm. That's the word I'm looking for. Conditioning. See, conditioning is your brain being taught to think a certain way. So we've been conditioned for 400 years, or even before that time, actually. Uh, every, every, every slavery event or enslaved event that the Hebrew, the Hebo people experienced left a mark, okay? So, so we're, we're, like I said, and because it's going back generationally, you know, and it's, it's affecting us, it's, it's affecting our characters e even today, you know? But that's why I say we have to read other stuff in order to reprogram our minds because like I said, within those works, if you read them, it will give you a better, you know, 
way to to navigate to 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 see things differently because that's what that's that's a, that's what everything is about is your perception if i could change my perception from what my eyes might be lying to me but if i if i if i could get my mind to change the perception of what i'm thinking i'm seeing and think of a different outcome because that's what reasoning is because you're able to think of different outcomes you're not locked into thinking one way oh like a dog i bark and i bite <laughs> you know no we can we can think we can fight we can run we can go get help <laughs> you know what i'm saying so we yeah and, and to that point um and i know um what what my brother um, jay heist i was referring to because we all know that um, you know, I understand this point about Christ, but we know in this walk, we're learning the true Christ because we were painted a picture of who Christ is versus who Christ really is. The Messiah really is. So, of course, to your point, you have to do that by what studying. You know, you have to do that by being properly educated. And as a people, we were improperly educated. We were taught by the very people that murdered us that kidnapped us so we were taught love through the very through the oppressors you know we were taught love uh kind of almost like a a rape victim being teaching uh being taught um how to love or how to forgive by the perpetrator and so we're kind of in that situation so uh from that perspective uh when we understand the true messiah what he stood for and not not this Eurocentric one that we're painting, but the true Messiah. You know, we'll see that he wasn't this pushover. You know what I mean? We'll see that he stood firm. You know, uh, he was educated. You know, it, a, a number of different things. As a matter of fact, I, I love the scripture in Acts. I can't remember the actual verse. Whereas though the um, the apostles had to what uh, to a community, they had to burn up some books. Because some of the books that they were getting into were leading them into mysticism. So they had to have a balance of the information. So to your point, yes, we have to read and we cannot be uh, blind by saying, hey, you know what? I'm just going to read the Bible and nothing else. Well, how are you going to understand what you're reading if what you've been what you've been taught comes from the very people um, that has that has enslaved you and the information that you're making references to? or from, or using as a source, is their same sources. So how would you discern to know what's a good, credible source and what's not? So I definitely understand your point, and I understand what Jay Heist, I was on um, um, point as well, This, you know, just the direct point of it, uh, of what he made in terms of um, getting free from those curses. When you really understand the true Christ, right, uh, you can get away from many of the consequences. Now, as a people, as a whole, we still going to have a, a a a corporate curse that you know that's going to be released, but individually we can let go. We can be freed from many of these curses as we see examples in the scriptures. Uh, Jay High said, "I was just going to say something." Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with what you're saying, Pastor. And uh, don't get me wrong. Yeah, we definitely have to read. Uh, even the scripture tells us, "Study to show ourselves approved." Um, so, yeah, we definitely have to read, get in the book more. Um, uh, me personally, um, and I think I brought this up to you early on when we first met, um, you know, I would like to learn more about Paleo Hebrew because I think that would bring out the scriptures even more so for me and, and, and understanding it better. Um, but overall, yeah, you got to be studious. You have to, you have to get in the books. You have to look at to see what the scriptures are actually saying to you, most definitely. Absolutely. And you know what's interesting? What well, many people don't realize that Paul made a lot of references that was not uh, references within the biblical text. You know, when you read some of his works, he wasn't just making references to, from, from the biblical text, but he used sources um, outside of the biblical text uh, to some of the people he, he, he ministered to. Uh, so to to Dora L's point, uh, but Dora L, did I, I think you had something else you say you're going to share? I, I apologize if I cut you off. Oh no, no. The, 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 the only you, other thing geek mode. you know you're going geek mode on it. <laughs> the only other thing is that is, is what always seems to to come into 
to our uh, that impacts us, that impacts us greatly, is that we're too trusting. <laughs> we trust too easily. Uh, I, I, I know that, you know, because of the way that the system is, that, you know, because we try to make it and to try to get by, but it seemed like it's always those folks that are half melanated. Mixed melanated is the ones that sell us out tacitly. And those are the ones that it seemed like we trust, uh, you know, because I, I was, it's a book that I was reading, uh, one of these graphic novels, and it's based upon a true history. Uh, uh, it, it was Meganon, Menanon, actually. And it was talking about how uh, Menanon, when he was captured by the, uh, by the Crete, uh, by uh, by the Creek King at the time. Uh, and uh, he gave, the Creek King gave him one of the wives who was mixed blooded. And she, she you know, he, he, you know, he slept with her, uh, Menonon, he slept with her and he, cause he found her beautiful and attractive. So, but to make a long story short is that eventually she was trying to get him to stay on the side of the king who was oppressing all the, the Egyptian people who were enslaved by the Creeks at the time. So she was trying to really use her wiles to, to you know, affect his thinking to, to get him to switch sides. And she basically said, no, they, they treat me too well. I don't wanna be like the other people. You know, I wanna be better than them, you know? And, and it seems like that's what we're always we're always being sold by some, you know, looking at Clayton Powell. You know, I'm just finding out his daddy was pale, a pale guy. I didn't realize that until recently uh, doing studying. Uh, so that 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 tripped my mind out. But, you know, here, here it is. He was a pale man passing himself off as a mixed mulatto. But he wasn't. He was totally pale skinned. Uh, but, you know, Adam Clayton, he was he was he was a mixed child, but he was selling us with this, uh, you know, let's let's integrate, you know, and that was the worst thing actually for us is integrating uh, with, with, with with an enemy. As we see, uh, they're still shooting us in the back. Uh, you know, like I said, uh, you know, Slavery really hasn't ended. If you actually look at the 13th Amendment, it's, it's still present. And then if you actually look at the statistics of people who are being stolen daily, even in this country, being sold into slavery, slavery ain't gone nowhere. <laughs> well, I, I did wanted to um, mention because uh, I, I, you 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 do a lot of reading, a lot of research, and you know I. I I think you send me send me reference on uh, send me sources like uh probably about five five sources a day at least <laughs> right and that you know and that's a good thing because you you you're very sourceful uh but the one thing that really stands out uh about uh one the, the, what you just pointed out is i'm not i'm I, and i know you're familiar with what sambo is what sambo means um are, are you familiar you familiar with yeah. sambo right yeah yeah so when you start looking at some of the situations and I, I'm literally working on a video right now, documentary, and just looking at some that uh, were considered Sambo and some of the things that they were subjected to for not selling themselves out. But you brother, do you realize in Bantu that Sambo means Sabbath keeper? <laughs> no, I understand that. But, <laughs> yeah. So. But, but yeah, I'm, I'm not even going to that right. point. Yeah, but, but I'm just but saying. It's, from, it's, it's funny how they take a word and apply a negative connotation to it, and we run with it, and we thinking it's something negative. It's like yeah. I said, even when you look at the, uh, from my studying, what I'm doing when I look at linguistics, uh, the word nigger is the wrong pronunciation of the word. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah I, I understand. But it, the should point be, is, it should be inner, inner. Yeah, that would be the proper pronunciation. Well, the, the the point that I just wanted to make with 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 Sambo because um, the way that it's been used and the definition that's there is someone that's mixed, right? And they were 
uh, they were associated with a yellow monkey, unfortunately, like you said, the negative connotation. But the point that I was I was using in that was there are stories about um, those that were considered to be mixed among our community that did not sell sell us out, that actually took a stand because they were like, look, I'm not going to let you continue to do this. I'm not going to let you rape me. I'm not going to let you do this to other women. And before you know it, some got hung upside down. Some got um, uh, uh, hung on their side, you know, to where as though uh, the, the, instead of the noose around their neck, they put the noose around their rib to further torture them. And really, anyway, that's a whole nother discussion. So I definitely understand what you the point that you made about the mixing and so forth, because we do see the mixed multi, multitude in the scriptures. But I think that um, there, there are, I mean, that, you know, Truth be told, we got some brothers and sisters that were dark melanated that sold our people out as well. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, yeah. it's, so it's, it's not a it's it's not a total indictment, but I just that 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 is what we just have to be aware of certain things. And when we when we travel in certain circles to have our mind, because you know, like I said, we we we're trusting, especially when they look like us or we perceive them to look like us. But they have a whole different agenda because they actually working for them and they looking at what they can give them. So they ain't working for us or, you know, have. So it's just something that, you know, uh, and then, like I said, it's not a total condemnation on everybody. That's that. But I'm just saying we have to be aware. And like I said, when we travel in certain and just be, you know, have notice, notice, notice things. Yeah. Yeah. I think the biggest thing is the Holy Spirit. You have to have a spirit. The only way you're going to really understand the spirit yet, like you pointed out and like Jay Highstyle pointed out reading, but you have to have the spirit of the most high because Christ even said, he said, guess what? The wolf comes in what? Sheep's clothing. In other words, the deception is going to look just like us. The That's deceiver right. is going to look just like us. Yeah. But the key is what is on the inside of them? What is their agenda? That's going to what actually exposed them. Right. So um, great point. Great point. Jay, did you want to um, 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 mention anything that you want to uh, any comments that you want to share? Hey Jay, you're breaking up here. You, you're breaking up. Here. Oh, okay. Yeah, you break. You breaking um, up. Can you hear me now? Okay, yeah, I can hear you now. I'm still breaking up. I can hear you now. Oh, okay, I, I was just saying that I'm I'm enjoying the community here um, more than anything, and um, um, the brother is bringing up, uh, bringing up some very key points on how we need to proceed. Um, just like you were saying, Pastor Kelly, that um, we've been hoodwinked, bamboozled. You name it um, for such a long time, and um, now that we come to the truth, we, we need to start doing um, more research on our own and um, just getting down to the heart of the matter and seeing what actually is the truth. And um, unfortunately, even our own um, look to fight against that. And um, I'm not calling out any names. I'm sure you know who I'm talking about, but um, yeah, they, they're fighting against the truth. And um, it, I feel that if we were all working together for a common good, to say we, like most of us say that we are doing, um, I think we'd be much better off. But I think a lot Absolutely. of people, they just don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to know the truth. They're, they're pre pretty much caught in, a, in a, um, a place of complacency. And they, they just want to keep the, the things the way they are. Um, you know, and we got to be like that he goat that steps out in front of the crowd and just uh, set the standard uh, in the way that God Most High wants us to set the standard, right? We have to lead the uh, mass to the truth. Um, even when, you know, we got people fighting against us, even our own kind, we got to be that he goat that steps out. Absolutely. Absolutely. 
Well, definitely appreciate um, appreciate um, your inputs um, as well. Uh, we're going to get ready to wrap up here. Dora L., did you have anything else that you want to share? Great points, especially about the stressing of reading. And I tell you, um, you know, there's not many things that get pulled past me, but Dora L. pulled a couple of things past me. So he already know I got a bone to pick with him. You know, so, you know, because he, he he pulled a couple of things on me. I was like, wait a minute, I'm I'm on top of a lot. Right. Right. Dorel. You know, I got a bone to pick with you. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's fine. You, know, <laughs> hey, you can't catch everything. You know, that's. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's why, you know, that's that's why uh, one person's job is to do one thing. Another person's job is to do another. You know, the, this is what I'm good at is 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 looking up information and researching and. Uh, you know, this, that's that's my, uh, you know, that's what I feel my my duty is. And like I said, my information, I share it. Uh, you know, a lot of these people, they hoard their information. They don't share it. I, as soon as the father showed me something and I see what and he blows my mind with, with the <laughs> with how he shows it to me and, and, and the meaning that it's it, that applies. And I immediately get rid of it. I, I send it out. I'm not trying to hold nothing. Okay, because because it's not mine in the first place. Everything is his. <laughs> so so the the only thing I like I said is 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 read, get into etymology, people, please. Because like I said, once you get into etymology, this Hebrew language and all these other things seems to become immaterial because when you see that the words have an origin and the original word and the based against the false meanings that they give you today, which I call I call it word craft because they're crafting meanings that don't apply to the prefix nor the suffix of the word. So it it's immaterial because that's that's how words are created by prefix and suffix. If the prefix and suffix don't match the meaning that they're giving you of the word, they're lying to you. That's like the word Jesus can't mean son of God or the, the, the salvation, because J-E means earth and S-U-S means under the earth. So that's prefix and suffix. That's basic how language works. <laughs> and you have to learn that. If you if you get into etymology, this thing about, oh, I got to learn Paleo Hebrew, because a lot of this stuff, you know, I, I see a lot of Bantu languages that are, are, you know, is having a lot of stuff that is predating Paleo Hebrew. So I'm like, oh, you we'll, know, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with that. We'll deal with that because I yeah. definitely want to deal with that. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. so I definitely want to deal with that. I want to get yeah. ahead of ourselves on that one. OK, but so, definitely get into etymology. And it's one book that I, I would suggest to you. This this one uh, writer uh, of this particular book. Uh, give me a second here to pull it up. The name of the book, and it's, it's a great beginner's book. And the way he breaks it down, all how the, all these words are are actually, uh, you know, we're being hoodwinked and thinking that they don't mean the same because they don't, they, they tell you they don't mean the same because they don't have the same spelling, but they'll have the same sound, which go, goes back to a common root, you know? So a lot of that stuff is, is meaningless that they try to tell you. Uh, but his, his, the name of his book is Deciphering the English Code by Joseph Arnesti. Please, everybody who's listening right now, get that book. This will open up so much things to you as far as etymology and origins of words go. And like I said, a lot of this, a lot of these, a lot of us are lost because people are changing the meaning. Absolutely. I think we I think we lost you on door L. And that that's something that I've been teaching for years is the etymology of words you know, to really start understanding what words mean in certain periods. So that way you get more of an accurate, accurate understanding of it. Uh, so that's a great point. And if you can do our L, I think we broke up, uh, um, but put it inside the the chat and I could pen it. So that way, uh, when th those that come back and view it in the future, they'll see that reference. Uh, one of the basic uh, ones that I recommend uh, for for those uh, for beginners as well is um, I have I have one near me is it's called the the um, Bernhardt Bernhard Concise Dictionary of Etymology 
So this is one of the ones I have multiple ones, but this is a simple one. This is dealing with American English. And you'll find out, I'll be surprised as Dora L pointed out uh, what you know, some of these words actually means and where the origins of them. So great point, Dora L. And if you can uh, shoot it, um, put it inside the chat so that, that way I can pin it. And um, we will can, definitely can you still hear me? Now, now I can. You, 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 um, blank yeah, out for a little bit. I can't bit. hear anything right now. Can you hear me? Let me, let me drop out and drop back in. All right. Oh, he, he jumped out. But Jay, I'm gonna get ready to wrap it up. I'm getting kind of uh, uh, heavy eyed here, but I definitely yeah. appreciate you, my brother. Um, we'll, we'll do this again. I'll be online, um, this, um, oh, Sunday at three and we'll deal with some, some touchy stuff that, we just need to talk about, you know, a lot of the perversions that our community have been subjected to and think that it's OK. Uh, and the challenge is how do we define what's natural and what's unnatural when we were put into an unnatural situation mm -hmm. and we were subjected to unnatural things that have become a culture? You know, so we're, we're going to address some of those things, really deal with as we talked a little bit about generational curses and deal with why do we see some of the behaviors within our community and that traumatic uh, events can have an impact on the things that we see today among uh, family members, among friends, among our community. So, uh, Dor L, you there? You, I see that you're back here. We can wrap it up here. Any yep. final things you want to share? And I'll let Jay Highstyle uh, say something after you. And then we're going nope. to wrap it up. No, nope, that was pretty much it. Like I said, uh, we we have to get into etymology. If you if you get into etymology, a lot of the uh, I'm not saying it's immaterial to learn Hebrew, but a, a lot of that will kind of subside away. Because you'll see a lot of the, the in the etymology, how it's working, that a lot of the rules that they're trying to tell you about language and how it works is lies. Because they they that's why, you know, I, I found books where they tell you that the N G R in a series, in a letter series where we're saying nigger and we thinking that. No, the G is supposed to be silent. That's why I say it's a lot of stuff that we don't realize in language that we're being told. And because see the way, the way that they gave it to us, we're cursing ourselves because we're not pronouncing it the proper way. So you curse yourself when you don't, you know, like I say, the, the, the name Jesus, you, you, you're cursing yourself to earth, actually below earth. That's what it means. So you're, 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 you're assuming you're ascending, but you're not because of the, 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 the prefix and suffix the application of it is against what you're what you're what you're intending so and we have to learn etymology it, it, that's imperative just point blank imperative if, if, like i said if i can't say if you don't do the ep, the the epigenetic reading or the racial battle fatigue reading please read about etymology anything that you can find about etymology any books that you you know, can look up about etymology, do that, because that will open your eyes to seeing a lot of, because they try to, to try to express to us that languages are not related and are immaterial to each other. But when you start reading about languages and doing etymology, that's so, that's such a lie. It's such a farce. Well, we're definitely going to deal with that. We'll deal with that. Um, we'll do a show on that. And um, definitely appreciate you for bringing that out. Um, and we're going to deal with that more because okay. I'm I'm big on um, knowing and understanding the etym etymological uh, perspective of words. So definitely appreciate you bringing that out and appreciate you taking the time out to jump on and, um, uh, you know, sharing your your inputs with the people. Um, doctor, do you want to um, um, give some final words for the people as well? Yeah. Um I agree with the brother and what he's saying. Um, we definitely have to get more in the book. Um, even uh, scripture tells us that my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Um, so yeah, that's one thing that's imperative for us to do. Um, you know that old adage that says that if you want to hide anything from a black person, just put it in the book. Um, so yeah, we got to turn that, that whole adage around and 
um, start getting more and more into the books. And like I said earlier, just seeing what the truth actually is telling us. What is the truth? Um, and I, I feel that, and I know that we're heading in the right direction um, by knowing that we are the people of Israel um, and we got to keep keep going. It's, it's more than just knowing that we're Israel. We, we, we must know what thus says the Most High. And the only way we can do that again is to study. So, yeah. That's it. Yeah, to, just, to, just to end on a light note, uh, if we should smash some Popeye's chicken sandwiches between some books, maybe our people will read them then. <laughs> 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 well, I, I, I'll say this, uh, guys. I, I appreciate it um, for all the information that you guys have shared um, coming on the, coming on this live, and I, I really appreciate you guys' inputs. And Dora, Dora L, please um, type it in for the people because people are asking about the the source that you mentioned. Uh, if you could type it in before uh, you drop off, or uh, if you you know put it inside the chat so that way I can pin it up. Or if not, um, I'll put it inside the, the comment section and pin it there as well. But if you could um, put it inside the chat before we hang up here uh, or um, jump off or, you know, of, of this live uh, in this session, if you could do that, that'd be great. So that way the people will be able to uh, get that source that you mentioned. But thanks again for sharing the sources. Um, much needed. Again, among our community, we need to share sources. As um, Jay pointed out, as you pointed out, and um, we continue to reiterate, this is why I'm very transparent with what I come across and I share it. So at least th those that are watching can say, hey, at least he gave sources. Whether you agree or disagree, at least we're giving you, we're presenting you with sources that you can go and do your own research and confirm what's being said. And of course, we can't say everything because it, we, we could be discussing certain things for days, but at least you'll be able to go home in your own, I mean, at your own, own uh, time, at your you know convenience. While you're at home, you can go revisit what is being touched on and then go inside these sources and you'll discover some other things that may answer que um, questions that you've had years ago. Uh, but nevertheless, I appreciate you brothers for Doing that in Door L. Did you put the um the book in there yet? I'm working on it right now. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna delay a little bit just to make sure that the chat continues. But uh, you know, just so that way you could get it in there. Um, but it's again, in there now. Is in there now? It's in the private chat. If you wanna wanted me to put in the the other chat. Yeah, put it in the other one. If not, I can copy it in there. Here. All right, I'll take that and I'll, I'll do it right here while we. Yeah, it won't let me. It won't let me do it uh, in the regular one. Okay, let me do it right now. Uh, I'm gonna cut it down. Actually, yeah, because it's uh, lengthy here, so I'm gonna take some of the names off of it. Because it, it gives you a maximum of about 200 characters. Uh -huh. So I'm going to take it down enough to where so we can get it. All right. Uh... Okay, I'll put it there. All right, guys, you have it right there. I penned it, uh, the name of it and the link. So if you want to read, um, get this book for free, it's right there. The link is there so that way you can download it and you can review the source for yourself. And again, etymology is very important. Very important. So thanks again, um, 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 Dora L. Thanks again, my brother, Jay Heistow, for you guys for oh. taking time out your schedule to, uh, uh, you know, jump on and share some some words of wisdom with the people we'll be back online um, again three o'clock sunday uh doing truth talk and we're going to share some more uh um, touch on some other topics that we need to touch on but with that being said appreciate you family thanks you thank you guys for taking time out of your schedule to watch the presentation go back over watch it again 
Pre feel free to put comments inside the comment section, but let's be respectful. Let's be uh, the people of the book that the Most High called us to be. So in the words of uh, Moses, as he said in Exodus chapter 14, chapter 13 and 14, fear ye not, stand still, see the salvation of Yahweh. Yahweh with, uh, excuse me, these Egyptians that you see today, you will never have to deal with them again. These strongholds will never have power over you again. The Most High will fight for you, but you have to hold your peace. Nevertheless, can't go back, can't stay here. Guys, we have to keep moving forward. Shalom.